Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to EGFC Week 7 Smash Bros. I'm South Beach, just South Beach, until we get another caster here. Uh, today, we got William and Mary versus Canisius College. So this is going to be a pretty good match. Right now, both uh, players are doing a button check while we speak here. While I speak here, because guess what? It's just me for the first few minutes. But while we go into this... Canisius is bringing in Weebson. He usually mains Dark Pit and Me Brawler. Wow. Uh, let me pull up William and Mary here for a second. I believe they got Luco. I don't know if that was his name or not. I think I got it wrong, but I'm going to double check. But he is a Sephiroth player. And yes, Luco is the player. I think I'm pronouncing his name right, but it looks like... The stage ban was to PS or was banned until each team picked PS2 because guess what? That's the stage everyone likes apparently. So that will be pretty set so far. Uh, we will be bringing in this match very quickly here soon. Uh, but just stick around with us and we'll throw it to about a 30 minute break. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. It looks like we're going into the match here real quick so once again William and Mary Canisius College I think that's how you pronounce Canisius but I, I I'm assuming it's gonna be uh, Dark Pit versus Sephiroth so this is gonna be a good match a match you don't want to miss obviously and if you haven't done it already I usually save this at the end but follow EGF on Twitch and on Twitter and every other social media platform we have. We also have YouTube, where you can watch previous matches on YouTube. But, enough of that, let's just go in straight to the match. And it looks like Luko's actually rocking Cloud today. Rocking the other Sephiroth, that cross slash is opening up here, and that deadly back air. Me, personally, I think that's the most powerful back air, but he just messed it all up, trying to go for the spike. Not gonna work there. Good news is he got 79 on Weepson, so that doesn't give him too much of a big disadvantage because it looks like he's mostly in control of this first match. There's the aerials, and is that going to take him down? No, it's not. But 124 for Weepson, 4, and he just wastes the cross slash, but immediately follows up with the back air, and Weepson trying to get back on the stage, trying to make something happen. Oh, Luca wanted that forward smash, just doesn't get it. And here comes Weepson trying to make something happen. Immediately broken up by Luko. And that Electroshock is going to instantly stop Luko from gaining any traction. Now he's got full limit. And in there we go. And now we're tied up at two apiece. Luko is the dark hit. Weepson is Cloud. I believe that is right. But either way... Already Cloud going into full limit and instantly 94 72 real quick. So both of these guys and another full limit Cloud the edge once again. That cross slash from Cloud, I tell you what, is very deadly. I used to be a Cloud main myself. Then I took an arrow to the knee. And I actually do believe Weepson is uh, Dark Pit and Luko is Cloud. That will be corrected on the monitor. There we go. And now here's a sweet grab from Luko. You know, starting out with the, um, what's it called? The SD there. Didn't get off to a great start, but he was in pretty much control of this entire match. Just landing all the, what is it, the aerials and the cross slashes. I think Cloud has some of the best aerials in the game you guys can totally disagree with me if you wish although the recovery is for cloud very questionable recovery unless he's got full limit but instantly uses just the neutral b to take this first match for william and mary and it is cloud strife winning it first game so obviously we just saw a great Great game from William and Mary's Luko. Uh, it's going to bring it up two to nothing over Canisius. We'll 
fix that. There we go. So definitely, you know, I would tell my caster, hey, I wonder what we would do, what uh, Weepson would do to even things up. Me, personally, you just got to get more hits on him. Didn't look like he landed a bunch of hits. And really, what this could have been a three stock for Luko if it wasn't for that SD, honestly. So, you know, you got to play as dark. If you're playing as dark bait, you just got to get a bunch of hits. I mean, I know that's really, you know, not very wisdomous of me to say as a caster, but honestly, just from the general eye test, you got to find a way to stop Cloud from those aerials. You got arrows, you can you can shoot him, even though with those aerials, he could probably just, you know, use an aerial to whack it away, I think. I don't know if that's possible, but, you know, if I'm Weepson in free Kanishi's College, look for an answer. That's all. That's all you can say. That's all you can hope for. And let's take a look at the bands here real quick. We got William and Mary banding, or excuse me, banning Lilat, Final Destination, and Smashville. And it looks like we have two Griff Esports. We're just going to try to find out who that is. And it's actually going to be Canisius. And Canisius, we're waiting for their ban in just a second um you know if you want to leave in the chat what stages you like to ban all the time go for it i mean me personally i'm one of those casual smash players that always gentlemen's to the pirate ship that is the best stage in all of smash that's never played in tournaments because rules don't allow it but you know that's because i know that because I'm just a casual Smash player. What do I know? And so it looks like we're still waiting on that band here. And it looks like we're getting... It looks like we're about to get a pick. Canisius is still determining their stage. And the stage has been determined. The stage is small battlefield. A little bit similar to PS2 in terms of the platform layout you know you just have the base platform and then the two but obviously it's in the name it's smaller ceilings low sides are low so honestly if these two characters if we're sticking to both cloud and dark pit once again it definitely benefits dark pit a lot so he doesn't have to put in a lot of hit power but cloud's got quite a bit of hit power especially on a character like dark pit so this would be a pretty dangerous stage if i do say so myself now we know that another another thing for canisius they also have me brawler under their belt that's weeps in for canisius so they can always throw him out but instead we're going back to dark pit we go going back to cloud there's those heroes again there's that cross slash following up always finding a break to just charge that limit that's what uh, players love to do all the time just if they're not doing anything just charge up your limit and get some good speed under you and yeah and good awareness from Luko not using the blast the limit blast right there because you know dark pit does have that reflector shield that could be very very dangerous for Luko if he did that so Weeps and just keeping distance right now. Sitting at 133. Very well aware that any hit can take him down. And it's just going to be a simple up smash that does it. That gives Cloud some limit break. Uses it on just the neutral B. Now we have a hit. Oh, and there's that first stock. Just that wasn't an SD. Weeps and gets on the board, and we're pretty much even. 19% to 11, and now rising to 38. Still, definitely a little bit of back and forth action right now. Now Weeps and still trying to keep his distance, trying to look for that side air button. It's not going to quite work. Avoids the blast, but the up or the up B from Cloud is so deadly is so lethal and so is that move giving weeps in just one more stock and now 
we've seen really is in a dangerous position position going up against a full limit oh but breaks the limit actually so now makes things a tad bit easier needs to get this stock this stock right here is crucial it's luco dealing with 94 percent damage you gotta find a way to get a hit and get another stock so you can make it even but now it's getting a little more difficult that electro shock trying to come into play fortunately missing there and once you miss with an electro shot, leaves you a little bit wide open. So you definitely have to be careful with that. And Luko just wanted that, wanted that cross slash kill. A very, very satisfying part right there. Weeps him really careful with his recovery, making sure he's still under the stage so Luko doesn't find out any think of any ideas and it's going to be the down smash that evens it to one in peace but dark pit sitting at 110 very 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 dangerous territory for him those aerials for dark pit are coming into play to just rack up a little bit of damage just a little bit by bit slowly getting him up to 37 but here's the follow through from Luko. now he's got full limit and you could have used the reflector shield that's all i'm saying but not gonna happen william and mary strikes first and wins the first set and they are gonna be going from six to nothing over canisius so obviously a really really good start from william william and mary and hats off to luco getting that great start obviously very much in control i mean I think we're going to actually throw to a quick break, obviously, and get a little another caster in here real quick. So stick around. We'll bring you round two in just a minute.
All right, we are back. I'm South Beach, and guess what? We are joined here by Intel. One sec, its name will be revealed to user Intel. Welcome, Intel. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. Had today. to sprinkle it in, you know. Didn't want to leak it out just yet. Had to wait till that name gets there, you know, until <laughs> you could eventually realize it. <laughs> but it's exactly. great to be here. Yeah, for sure. So, what if you're just joining us? We missed William and Mary getting that lead six to nothing over Canisius, and that was over what's his name, Luco as Cloud taking down Weepsin as Dark Pit, and back to back two stocks. So, really a good start here. And it looks like the stage is going to be PS2, but we're going to get a button check real quick. Oh, makes sense. I got to say, I, I got to see a little couple clips back and forth. You know, I didn't really get to tune in completely because uh, it was it was absolutely astonishing. But it, I'm not too surprised. Cloud is one of those characters that I think can have a lot of kind of comeback or big startup potential, while Dark Pit is more of one of those uh, very agile and flowy characters characters I, I think it's much easier to do more damage as cloud especially with that buster combination as the more damage you take that's going to fill up over time and then eventually you're going to be able to make big combos off of it well dark pit i feel is more of a kind of reactive you get hit yes you're going to have amazing recovery but you know you don't have that ability to kind of put in that damage it's similar to i think little mac how little mac has terrible recovery but when little mac is going it's terrifying they just bam bam they're in a real boxing game Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think definitely a really big factor in that matchup was also just weight. Uh, Cloud definitely just being heavier and uh, just a big hit or two. And I just didn't think Pitt had much of a chance. And it looks like we're going into this next match. Sephiroth for Kanishis and Mewtwo for William and Mary. So this is going to be an interesting matchup here. I definitely have to agree, Sethroth being one of those interesting kind of DLC characters with extreme rage and mobility, however, Clayton is forcing out these abilities, you see the stuns come, and, well, while they're even up in damage, Clayton's more focusing on counterplaying, wanting to get them off stage as fast as possible. Absolutely, right now, 74 to 44, make that 62 oh. in terms of damage, and, oh my goodness, Almost saw a potential spike from Doku Sky, but now trying to get it back in, and here's that fancy aerial. Sephiroth. Yes. Yeah. So much reach, it's terrifying as this edge guard is happening. The Mewtwo, being at such high charge, is unwilling to just immediately try to kind of play that aggression, and especially with these shield juggles, they're having to just kind of dodge around, look for that one opening, but look at this pressure. Sephiroth hitting that, now charging, may be able to spike, but just barely misses it. Oh my goodness, and a nice back air from Dr. Oh Sky, but then a follow through from Patriot and William and Mary up again. What a punishment combined into the parry, taking that stock absolutely immediately. Sethroth does not do well off that stage, so being hit by the back turn, well, Clayton's going to be feeling proud of that. Now just has to play a little bit more cautiously, still has that aggression available, but the recovery is absolutely amazing on YouTube. Oh no! What a mirror! And that back, the back air. That's another thing about Sephiroth. Intentionally taking himself out, but he's back. Yeah, just going to be able to come back. Now with these even ties, we're seeing Sephiroth wanting to kind of edge guard, force them off, try to get an early stock. However, it's a big pressure, especially with Mewtwo continuously kind of, kind of just charging their own beams, using the, the key blast or just energy balls as a sort of, you know, dis this order kind of thing. You see, the moment Sethros wants to do anything, gets hit by it, max damage, you're just not going to be able to kind of freely do anything. So you have to be using your reach to your advantage. Yeah, it looks like Claytron's definitely getting a lot of damage and getting a lot of hits, but then anytime Doku gets a break and he gets a hit off, it does a lot of damage. Definitely seeing a lot of hit power under Sephiroth right now. Sethroth is such a good character. Wanting to get that out, just barely making it back. It's a good float ability. Uh, but the big problem is once Sethroth gets going, you're going to be able to get a good damage in. However, this is not going to be a spike opportunity. More of just waiting, trying to get them at that highest charge so you can easily take them out. But it's a risk on Mewtwo's part as well. Oh, and there's the deadly throw, up throw from Claytron Mewtwo. And now, just it's like just that. 
Such a nice grab. Gonna be able to take this stock lead. Now with these combinations, we've seen Clayton just being able to move forward as we see the star charges throwing in that psychic blast. Having to play more carefully. It's such a disconcern. But look at this. Dusk wants to be able to take them out as fast as possible, but he's struggling. So a 102 to 49 in terms of damage percentage. Sephiroth needs to find that stock early right now and just avoid that damage. And that's just a deadly neutral air move from Mewtwo. Almost, oh my goodness, just a lot of combos are being fallen through right now. Yep, and it, it's one big pressure. As we see Daku, it's not really going in for the aggression, trying to just react to whatever is happening. The speed off of Clayton is absolutely oppressive. However, that combination right there is going to be able to damage him. But at 128, we may see Daku fall out. Ooh. Just the... Just the Wait, recovery. Oh, that's... Clayton what off... Hit? Yeah, Clayton could have brought that back just quick enough, but misses it out. Mm. Luckily, get that combo. And that's what I call a zero stock, you know, bringing it back at that last second. He's able to get that quick combination. Unfortunately, it just seemed that Daku was not able to kind of adapt up to this Mewtwo. Going to be losing that, that round at least. Absolutely. We saw a lot of, you know, it was pretty much all William and Mary's control right there. Just all the hit combos from Mewtwo, or not combos, just the air it was mainly a game in the air for him just you saw that neutral air attack and that attack is just so deadly with mewtwo that's probably what got it done at the end with docu sky it was just an absolutely beautiful performance so when seeing him come back and docu well you know just kind of seeing the clips it, it was an impressive strategy but <laughs> Uh, when it comes to the air, this is Mewtwo's game. Daku very much wants to thrive more onto the ground and pretty much should be focusing on, you know, breaking that shield, trying to do as much damage as possible. Uh, we, we often see them playing towards that edge, but not really finding much. I think out of everything when it came to adding Sethroth to this game, range is what works the best, and we're not really seeing that work too well. Maybe Clayton is just absolutely goaded when it comes to just walking into you and then Ah, charging at you and you know it's just a big fear of you just trying to take it mm -hmm. had no fear whatsoever going up against that range and the bands are coming in right now and william and mary's bands lilacs yoshi's and final destination so we'll get that stage <laughs> pretty soon man you know, at, at least for me every time i hear the word final destination uh i just always think about that old uh brawl meme of just like that's it fox final destination you know one stock mm -hmm. no abilities and it's it's my favorite thing uh because even to this day i feel people still like live up to that meme though not incredibly with fox uh they're more of just you know final destination no items let's just you know compete as it of normal but then again who plays timed mode so there you go exactly not a lot of people these days anytime i think of final destination it's just that Classic brawl music comes to my head, and that's just when you throw down. That's like some ultimate throwdown music right there. I'll give you that. Absolutely true. But I'm interested to see the kind of possibilities of how they're going to be taking it. Because Final Destination doesn't have too much that's different, uh, especially as there's no background clutter. So at least for someone like me who gets easily distracted, there's just not like a... A, a Donkey Kong out in the background for some reason, or a jungle that where you can see the water flow, and then you're like, ooh, it's just pure abyss, as we're going to be able to see kind of how they're going to play around. I definitely think, though, Mewtwo has been looking strong. Yep, and the stage they're actually going to be fighting in is Kalos, or Kalos, or... Oh, Kalos, the Pokemon! Kalos. Yeah! Keep it nice in the Pokemon stage realm area. So yeah, this is definitely going to be... This will definitely be a good matchup. I don't know. In terms of this stage and your Sephiroth and Mewtwo, who would you say has the edge now? Hmm. I need you to repeat that for me. You know, I got to make sure I heard yeah, yeah. you correctly. Yeah, uh, just saying, like, if you're on Kalo and you're watching Sephiroth and Mewtwo, who do you think, at the end of the day, is going to come out with the win? Yeah, you know, that just doesn't sound like a sentence to me. I just, it's so, oh, yeah. so funny. It's just like, oh, welcome to the Pokemon Champions, and we've got Sethiroth here fighting 
one of the strongest Pokemons, but I feel like Blayton still has that advantage. Uh, Daku needs to be able to adapt, and as we're seeing, while looking for these back hits, they're not really being able to get much out. Clayton's just doing an amazing job playing close, make sure this space is taken, trying to weaken them out as fast as possible. 9.5 to 56 is not a good lead to take in. Exactly, and now it's just rising as we're speaking, and yeah, we're, we're not really seeing a lot of the range game from Daku Sky that Sephiroth is really good at. We saw it a little bit with just the neutral air. That really helps. But in terms of Mewtwo's neutral air, it's just a little bit... I just think it's a little bit better. Uh, Mewtwo has a lot more options when you're in that air, while Sephiroth is much better forcing you off the stage. The range is absolutely insane, but Clayton's going to be having more options to be able to hit you. Notice how they grab immediately, spike you into that high ground, and now the moment that you're wanting to go down, what, what, what's going to happen? Are you going to be spiked? Are you going to be hit up? Are you going to be downbeat? Well, it just mm. seems you're going to be knocked out the moment that you touch the ground. Absolutely, and it almost looked like Claytron almost sd but able to recover just as well just moving around but hey three stocks to two i think claytron will take that any day absolutely it's such a good start uh when you're going up against Daku because sethroth is oh, as i keep saying a really strong character at times though clayton is more playing onto the edge wanting to bait out while Daku wants to be able to use her kind of side b special to pump in that damage you're able to if you get four kind of have a really nice combination however look at this clayton just goes in manages to knock it out though on this edge it's gonna be perfectly fine i i gotta say i'm surprised that uh, Daku didn't follow through with a smash attack after that fireball. I thought that would have been a perfect opportunity to get a little bit of damage with a smash hit. And now he's gonna go out. Look at this. Three stocks and still at 94.2. I mean, this isn't similar. This is like similar to a Lucario situation. You know, it's a big threat seeing this Mewtwo continuously live off. They're kind of considered Echo characters. No, not directly, but very similarly. Daku still... It's just not getting hit in. And look at this, being forced oh off the goodness. edge. It's just barely going to be able to make it back due to Clayton missing those jumps. But has to get the stock if they want any chance of a comeback. Yeah, that was nearly a three stock end. But just very fortunate for Doku's guy able to get back up on stage. There's that aerial again. There's the tail. I got to say, that tail also has quite a bit of range under it. Uh, it's, just, it's just what makes Mewtwo Mewtwo, you know, that big tail, though uh, kind of pink instead of black, with messes with the skin. Daku's being hit off the stage, having to just barely come back, is going to be able to get that side beam! Oh! oh. oh. Mewtwo, that was an absolutely beautiful recovery coming from Mewtwo. That was... We near thought that was going to be off-camera. An off-camera recovery, but... <coughs> excuse me, Daku Sky... Able to survive that, Clayton. Able to recover with 195 damage. I mean, you gotta, you gotta find a way to kill him now. There Look at is. that. Luckily, just missing out on that grab. The side step is going to be more than enough. But Daku's playing a dangerous game, and well, now luckily you almost managed to knock them off. But really, one big hit or grab is gonna like take that. you out. And just like that, Claytron, once again for William and Mary. In Increases that lead for William and Mary once again, and Ganesius is still sitting at a hole of a goose egg while William and Mary sits pretty with 11 points. Man, it's becoming a really big problem. A, a lot of these opportunities that we're seeing Clayton take, I feel, are very punishable. However, we're, we're not really seeing um, anything happen to it. And I think that's where Setheroff works best, though, having kind of quick flashes of attacks. Um, aren't really the best. We're, we're seeing a lot more Clayton moving in and at least taking an opportunity using those specials to take anyone out. However, Daku is not really doing anything. And, and I think this clip kind of proves it best. You see, they get hit, they get stunned for a second, countered out by these small attacks. And they're not really going to be able to play this game. They need to be taking more opportune uh, kind of advantages. That was just one moment where they were able to hit, but they're not really getting much and Clayton's taking that momentum. Absolutely, and it really looked like Doku Sky was trying to play really, really safe while Claytron was just way more aggressive than usual. I think that was just a little bit of a uh, game of mentality, too. And if you're going to be aggressive against a guy that's 
being pretty safe. Depending on the character, I think usually aggression always wins. In Smash, I definitely would say so. You're mm -hmm. not working against anyone who has a counter, uh, especially like someone like uh, Roy or, or you know the the many Fire Emblem characters that if you kind of play too aggressive and you get hit with that counter, it's a very big punish, especially being hit on towards those edge. So I'm definitely feeling like Sephiroth needs to just be moving in. You know, there's not much you have to worry about. Uh, Me Mewtwo is all about those close quarters. Well, yes, but you have a giant sword you know and so mm -hmm. all you have to do is you know stand a little bit back uh look at them and then whip them like you're in fencing you know it's just long range like what the hell? And, and and you know while yes Mewtwo, the uh, Clayton's doing an amazing job throwing out those psychic balls uh, a little bit to kind of get that hit stun in for a few seconds you you can definitely kind of predict it and even parry them mm -hmm. for sure yeah I, and also just that was a great sephiroth impression i'm very stunned by it so i applaud you there uh william and mary is going to be sending in bfd as Ooh. their next match and let me see here who canisius is sending in it's going to be reveal and it's going to be flapjack Ooh. captain captain for canisius so bfd he's rocking the steve <laughs> minecraft steve so that's, that's going to be good you know, and, and, uh, go ahead. I, I just want to say, oddly enough, Steve is a very, I, I would debatably say a high tier character in the Smash scene. I have to agree with you. He's very unpredictable and you just never know what he's going to throw at you. And then Flapjack, he's going to, you know, he's kind of a wild card. He's got Krom, he's got Pyra and Mithra. It's just whatever he's feeling today. So we'll see what he's feeling in this matchup. Yeah, I, I definitely have to agree. Though, Krom isn't... I don't know. I, I, I guess uh, Krom has always been that weird character for me. I never fully understood the style of how you're wanting to be playing Krom. But uh, Steve, I very much learned how. Uh, so I'll talk a little bit more on that. And then as we go into the match, I'll give further details of what I've been seeing. Um, especially since I think what makes Minecraft Steve so good is just the fact that he can place a block wherever he goes. So if you're just little down you can be a little messy you can even grief a little by like spelling out an l out of iron blocks dirt blocks and <laughs> you know it's a little rude that minecart can be absolutely impressive when you just throw that side b they get caught with it and now they're like well i can't get out i'm like at too high of a charge to fall there you go and then you know tnt also is a factor with steve there's just you know just there's too there's too much really and it looks like they're gonna do a quick button check while yep. they all set out obviously you want to figure out your button controls and make sure everything's working right get your fingers a little warmed up and yeah, yeah. last thing you want to do is be prepared to absolutely dome your opponent you know try to do a short hop uh, with your down special and then it doesn't come out and they're able to hit you and you just look like an absolute clown so I, i'd much prefer you know an hour's worth of button checking than seeing a, a player kind of mess up but this is where we go prom the legendary uh fire emblem character is gonna have to do their best mm -hmm. looks like we see steve right now chopping wood and you know Krom kind of weirdly enough reminds me yep. of a oh boy a little uh, attack in the button check we don't usually do this yeah uh a little toxic <laughs> i definitely <laughs> say may have not noticed or realized but uh i would definitely have to agree what makes Krom so uh different but yet si similar is that he's more of an ike kind of mix but he's much more agile so he does fall more into that roy he does benefit off of those short stances and look at that they're just making sure that you can just properly dig in to get that reset in but the, the issue comes when it uh for roy is that he still has that terrible recovery um i remember very early on i don't know how much this has changed but very early on there was that meme of the fact that like oh look crom uh crom side as <laughs> as that shows you're not going to be able to get back so um if you're not oppressive as crom you basically i think lose in any scenario especially against someone who has very great recovery though steve is one of those hit or misses i think you have to get a grasp of how that elytra works Mhm. Mm yeah that was probably the most extra button checks that I've ever 
witness a little bit of fighting a little bit of taunting and yeah so definitely when i look at Krom, weirdly enough he kind of reminds me of little mac in a weird sense like just this it's really just the speed uh i think i mean obviously uh, they're totally oh, no. way two different characters but i don't it's just like the movement little mac and Krom. it's just very similar i don't know but that's uh, definitely the weirdest take you'd have always hear in Smash. I can definitely agree because it's this close scenario. Like, Little Mac probably would not have survived this. And as we see BFD kind of get comboed for a little because look at so much control in this game. They're going to be able to play and they just have to make sure that they are on this Steve. The moment that Steve is getting momentum, well, they're going to be able to start mining. They're going to upgrade their tools and they're going to be feeling much better in this scenario. All right. And so far, really even fight 65 to 69 and rising up here for flapjack flapjack commanding the canisius team as their team captain so obviously getting a little bit of experience getting someone in here with that x factor going up against bfd just gotta rep it as much as you can. Uh, Chrome does so much damage, and especially most Fire Emblem characters with a sword, wanting to just protect themselves for a second, trying to just find as much iron diamonds, wants to be able to increase that damage as fast as possible because they're stuck on stone tools. Ooh. Unfortunately, though, that sword goes through the platform. It's gonna take you out. Just whacked him right out of the mine. That's not something you see every day going up to Steve. Ooh, one like catch out. You have to play a little bit more carefully. Uh, Steve is a little bit more floaty, and as you see, can be very annoying at times. And that parry, absolutely beautiful. The axe combo. This is what makes Steve so good. And there's that minecart once again. Always trying to look out for that minecart, but you also got to. Is not just a miner. He's got every arsenal. He's got every weapon in his book that he's able to build and flapjack once again takes his stock away it's very nice though an even trade so mm. far it seems that bdf the moment that they kind of get this disadvantage this is where they're starting to play maybe testing things out wanting to get a feel while flapjack is trying to do their best however steve is just so annoying so much pressure with the block placements you're basically changing the environment and that messes with the style that you want to kind of compete in 52 to 20 up oh, make that 47 and just more blocks are being placed all over the place and you know just it looks like flapjack's really taking this to just using aerial attacks trying their best unfortunately gonna be hitting that no this gives a chance for crumb to be able to come oh back goodness. Chrome would have actually lost otherwise the elytra is gonna be able to just barely make it back but they are both Boom. at the edge it just seems BFD is going to be punished trying to get back on the stage. Chrome and every Fire Emblem's edge guard's ability are absolutely insane, especially if you hit those back hits. It's basically going to be that one shot in the close up scenario. Absolutely. That matchup, especially at the very last stock at the very last stock piece, I was just back and forth really. So well done for Flapjack getting Canisius their first win. And really it's just a lot of, you know, really you can't really say a lot about it. It was just good, just good smash from both characters. Uh, I definitely have to agree. They're, they're trying to work off of each other. Uh, and while, yes, BFD is more focused on just kind of trying to get as much damage in as possible, Flapjack has been primarily paying attention to more oppositions and uh, when BFD is making mistakes. More of those ideas when Steve is going in and like this scenario, tries to just wait it out, look for an early hit, and then gets punished. I love the way Flapjack's been playing as it's been more prioritizing how we're going to be reacting to Steve and how, you know, let Steve make a move and then play against that move, which is very still an aggressive reactionary style because Steve, um, the moment Steve places a block, that changes how you want to play. Mm-hmm. And the bands are in. The bands from Canisius were Final Destination and Smashville. And the pick is Kalos. Ooh, once again, uh, you know, I definitely respect Kalos. is a very beautiful map to be on, uh, as well as it, there's not much clutter. Sometimes small amounts of clutter can very much affect a, a single frame in game. So I can definitely uh, understand it, you know, being a, a fighting game pro myself, obviously, as I speak. <laughs> but. <laughs> 
it's still gonna be that mirror matchup as we've been seeing well not direct mirror but you know what i mean chrome is still more looking to play a lot more aggressively just look how quick they're being with these dashes zero to 60 percent make that 68 in 15 seconds that's just the hit power prom is packing and here now here comes bfd whipping out the pickaxe the wood materials and there goes that sword oh well, no oh steve oh. you have to go mining sometimes you know it's it's such an odd thing to say but that resource is absolutely massive this is why you see them immediately now going for as much as they can yeah, Flapjack is on a roll right now, really feeling Krom in this matchup. Doing a really good job of making sure Steve cannot get any resources. That's, that's basically how you want to be countering out. We noticed this grab looking for the spike, going to be missing out. Able to get back, but this gives BFD a little bit more opportunities to try and get a better sword, but they're still not getting any room to play. Yeah, looking for that sword fight, and there's that magma... Once again, that magma block really was the one thing that really beat Krom. I mean, obviously taking out two stocks and beats the minecart in that situation. Minecart only works so well, and being at Stone Tools just means you don't really have too much damage. Still, being at 97 is a threat. Magma Cube is such a powerful ability for no absolute reason, and as we see that shield dangerous you low, look at that. It has a tracking sense. So, you know, the moment you get even a step too close, you're going to be punished for it, and poor Flapjack Man. must feel frustrated by it. it. It's got him for not once, not twice, but three times in terms of stocks, but... 152 for BFD sitting really dangerous and Flapjack's gotta like that percentage and yep it's just a little spank and now we're down to one stock for BFD two stocks for Kanishas and Flapjack and it's just Chrome is a really good character though using that minecart setting yourself up the recovery just barely it goes high enough mm -hmm. gonna be able to come back you know glad they fixed that issue with Chrome and now this is where BFD is gonna be saying oh no what do I do what do I do Oh, missed the ether, but able to recover again. Just dead. That recovery is really good. And there's that, once again, that magma block. A little bit of an ether. Maybe just... Or, that's not, that's not an ether. That's an elytra. <laughs> yeah, wrong, wrong franchise wrong game. as well. Yeah, look at this. Chrome's oh. got the ether. Exactly. They are edge guarding as much as possible because they're both at high stocks, though BFD doing this is a lot more dangerous. Though with this grab, it's a very big knockback. Look for that mm -hmm. fire, and that's a chromicide right there. Yep, and way to go for BFD to just keep on the edge and not allow Flapjack to recover. I mean, that was definitely a long shot for him to recover, but BFD taking no chances whatsoever. Oh my goodness, using the piston as a ricochet coming yeah. close look at this the moment that air combo starts hitting that's when the magma cube gets used and hits in with that damage though bfd is going to be able to come back from this basically a little bit unpunished trying to just mirror before oh. and absolutely wait what he's all right oh boy my goodness i've never felt more frustrated as a viewer in my life flapjack is <laughs> needing to just get one good solid hit but it's you're getting into that close one shot potential and with the magma cube's own tracking you could be shut down at any point yep and he's not falling for that magma cube right there flapjack near 100 oh boy the team oh okay you try to set up a punish you really tried and then just the dash air it was it was the mid shield air cancel <clears throat> that gave them enough momentum to immediately push to the left, go to the side, and then bam, end it all. That's what I'm talking about. That's such a good way to be able to bring it back, kind of putting in the scores for yourself. And uh, I, I just feel more bad for the Steve because they, they've tried to sit there and be really big brained, and unfortunately, it just wasn't an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And you know you gotta be big brained if you're playing as Steve. You have you know there's just a lot of things you can do with steve we saw earlier with that um you know smash attack with the piston he put it in a block and just try to make him ricochet instead of just sending him flying sending him like at a like a specific direction to go it just didn't quite work out and then obviously with the tnt at the end trying to be clever but flapjack has faced this a couple times he's yeah 
He's faced some Steves in his day. I don't, I don't know what type of uh, trauma uh, I think Flapjack has. Maybe Flapjack just like does not like Minecraft. Absolutely despises it. <laughs> Came in with such a prejudice as most of the most of the fights that were being taken place were more of denying that resource management. Uh, I, I think which are absolutely big place. As you see in that moment, look at that boom. It was. Man. The dash cancel that absolutely gave them enough spots to be able to bring it back in and such a good style too one mistake could have cost them and luckily enough that sword broke the moment it happened so even then you would be protected <clears throat> still though uh steve not being able to build up those resources means that well you're, you're going to be playing a lackluster game it is still being very close kind of stock to stock so i'm wondering what's going to be the change that makes those differences right absolutely and now going into round f uh Kinesius is going to send in tag a fly and William and Mary's going to send in outer rim and yeah. a fly let me see i believe is game and watch is one of those game and watch players oh no yes so that's probably what we'll see he's also got Steven dark dr mario under his belt while Outer Rim is the Byleth and Robin player. I think Robin... I don't I don't want to see any Game & Watch in my, in my day, all right? Not today. Oh, boy. Uh-oh. I've got some prejudice against Game & Watch players. I, th I think we all do. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, boy. So we might have a little bias in this next cast coming up here against you're, Canisius. You're just going to hear me complain about the fact that you can hit your down special and get a 9 out of pure random... And, and, and it'll just absolutely O-stock you. And that makes me so upset because I'm the type of guy who gets hit by it every time. <laughs> mm. but, but when I try it, I get no luck. And that's what's up. That's what's up. Uh, William and Mary starts the banning process with Smashville. That would be the first ban. So waiting on Canisius to ban their two picks. And then William and Mary will get the final pick. Um, so... I'm honestly just going to expect PS2 for the stage pick. That's been, that's kind of been the trend for the past, how long have we been going on? Seven weeks, I think. So yeah. I'd say roughly. Roughly. So yeah, this is week seven. So yeah, the past seven weeks, we've always just been going PS2 the entire time. Mm-hmm. You make a very good point. Uh, I, I'm very excited to see these different matchups go in, uh, especially since we were so used to just seeing those very close things. So um, as much as I would want to see a very like close stock to stock, it's 200 to 200. I'm more interested to see if there's a possibility of just a really close, like a really dominant stand of like a two stock, no hits, perfectly parried. You, you can't even like a whole aimbot type of game. Mm -hmm. and uh ps2 was actually banned so william and mary's actually going to be going with uh town and city as the stage so i think this is our first time seeing town and city on the stream really really good stage really nice big stage so yeah this should be good can't really complain about that i definitely like town uh though 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 once more uh i have an issue at least you know i get very distracted very easily so uh, if you just see me kind of lost off i'm looking at the houses i'm i'm, I'm rating their architecture from nine to ten but mm -hmm. uh you know i can definitely feel a comeback starting to come in uh they've been looking a lot better kansas uh are been looking very nice especially maybe it's just the the captain special that they were able to bring in for sure yeah definitely the uh you know, town and city definitely can be distracted, especially if you're a hardcore Animal Crossing player and you're just like, oh, well, I wouldn't have put the town, the town hall right there. I would have put it on the coast or something like that. Definitely one of those picky players. But yeah, looks like we'll go town. We might be getting a button check here uh, pretty soon. Not there's no word yet, but <laughs> I'd always assume. I got to say, I love these button checks. Uh at least because you know i joined here a little late so i got to see that first button check it's just so funny you get to see them like looking around making sure everything works and uh that's very important at least for smash i think the the smallest button change can definitely go things especially if that game and watch pops out hopefully not uh don't want to be able to see anything like that uh very biased very biased caster right here mm -hmm. i i have to agree with you i mean it's like as a. <laughs> As one of our 
Kanishi's players say they uh, it's like icing the kicker. If you guys know any football terminology, icing the kicker basically just chewing off clock and throwing off throwing off play styles. But looks like we'll probably be getting started here soon. Looks like just like a the, little, little back like and the, forth chatter. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to hope so, especially since we are in uh, esports. Look at this. This is a little simulation. You're going to be able to notice what's going to happen. So that's Mr. Game & Watch, you know, just trying to figure out. Try mm -hmm. Last up, you got to be careful. And look Oof. at this. Absolutely dominating the monkey. I absolutely love Donkey I'm a Donkey Kong main myself. Ooh. That's yep. how it should be. That's how it should be. That's probably... Yep. That's probably what we will be seeing, and you know, a fly is playing as Game and Watch, and it's basically going to be swiping a fly almost. And very he's upset. yeah, at least we're getting this test. I'm very upset to be seeing this uh, come out today. Uh, look at this Game and Watch. Although I do like Robin, I feel Robin could be a, a, a semi decent counter when it comes to this opportunity. Yeah. Though, look at that, trying to just style, try to show off their talents, not going to work out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I always think Robin's kind of under characters, you know, has a lot of good spells under their belts, uh, under their belt. They can, you know, keep range and then also, you know, in, in like a fist fight, if they're pretty close to close, I think they can figure out ways to uh, best their opponent, basically. And obviously you have that spell... Don't know the name of it because I'm just a casual player myself. I main DDD. That's how casual I am. Oh my you just, goodness! You can, and I'm actually really good as DDD. Not gonna lie, but they can uh, heal themselves by taking, by giving their opponent damage. So this could be a good, good fight. Oh, oh my goodness! What a good parry to start things off. The game and watch just looking closely, just absolutely being oppressive. Game and watch once again one of those characters I very much dislike being able to get these air routes. Robin needs to be able to have an opportunity to set up their own attacks, and that's the moment you got. I didn't know if that was a sarcastic comment or not about game and watch, but definitely pretty pretty good. I'm terrible at reading sarcasm. Didn't notice. Uh, no, you know, it, it, it was a good startup, you know, I, I am at least gonna give them that benefit Especially since there's just so much room that game and watch can get away with notice how they're moving in trying to bait them to walk into the bombs But I mean Robin Shoot. has so much range it works to great degrees And it's just that little aerial flip of the wand that gives outer rim the advantage so far with three stocks and already racking up 37% right at spawn, but there's that key Trying to even things out here for Kanishis. Uh, gotta be very careful. Almost messes that out. Is able to just bring it back. However, you are losing that edge guard shield uh, kind of protection. Uh, so at least you're being able to walk in, looking to just drop the bombs. Do absolutely major damage. Though they're looking for the key. Oh my goodness! Ooh. What a guard. A nice little turtle snap with the edge guard there, and really only taking one. A little bit of damage right there. I almost said 1%, but that clearly was not the case. No. Obviously. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of just kind of resource management being able to hit that fire out, looking for the combo. What a <clears throat> nice heal steal. And now Game & Watch is at a one-hit shot. If it's a back turn, it's just absolutely over. But, I mean, the smoke is really good. Wait. Oh, man. My point exactly. Yep. We'll have to take a look at that replay once again, because that looked pretty sweet. But two to one, uh, flies getting 40 and a half right after respawning with while wow, our rim is sitting at 55.2%. And oh my goodness. What did oh, I say? When I what? said it was the back turner, it's absolutely gone. You're Millie Rock, you're taking a home. Uh, you know, you're back in melee at this point. You gotta question your own life decisions. Absolutely. That was honestly a really, really good matchup. William and Mary, and it looks like a fly had a really a lot of good opportunities up against Robin, but just at the end of the day, Game & Watch super, super light, and Robin able to punish him for that. Yeah, I also think a big problem that came with it is, um, obviously these two players are trying to play as fast as possible, trying to go after each other, but the Game of Watch is looking like they're trying to set up specific scenarios while we're seeing Outer being able to kind of just 
go with the flow, I guess, of more more of it. As well as uh, Robin works well when you're comboing these skills with range. So as they're being able to use their own lightning sword and they're being able to charge strike and then boom, jump in the moment that you're trying to get your recovery, it doesn't really feel that good. You're you're l limited to how you're going to recover, and that's just a really skilled Robin. Mm-hmm. For sure. Uh, William and Mary is banning. Final Destination, and Kalos, and Battlefield. So we'll be waiting for Ganesius with this next pick. And if you're... So, let's say, you are Game & Watch. What is a good stage to pick in this next scenario? You gotta go to your home turf. That's how I'd like to think. I always think that mm -hmm. uh, if you go to your home turf, you 100% of the time are going to be able to, to win... Uh, may maybe that's just me and uh, my favoritism towards the the uh, the Donkey Kong stage and playing Donkey Kong. You know, it's Monkey O'Clock. That's my catchphrase. <laughs> so there you go. at least that's what I'm feeling. Though uh, stage impact isn't too much, though it can be very much a game changer. I, I know to some people. Mm -hmm. For absolutely, and it looks like they're going to Fox and Falco's home turf at Lilac Cruise. So. That's a stage, if y'all have been watching me, that's a stage I just hate. I just don't oh. like this. I, I, it's just, it's the platform, it's like the edge platforms that really get me all the time. And anytime I want to throw projectiles or hit something or do an attack and someone's on that ledge, it just, it just ticks me off because I'm not able to hit him with the right angle. You know, I can definitely agree to you, and this is where the Robin is going to struggle, though with this quick swap of the skin. I respect that. Uh, the Game & Watch is going to have more issues. There is a lot more protection for Robin to be able to combo, but then that counters in that it's really hard with these platforms to hit your, ski your like attacks, especially when mm -hmm. they're ranged. Yeah, and you can see, definitely we're trying to see deal with Outer Rim, and it, it, he's just missing him, and maybe it's just him missing, but... I, if it were me playing, I'm blaming the stage 100%. I don't care. I don't yeah. care if it's true or not. I always blame the stage. This is, this is where you tell them, uh, but when it happened on Final Destination, that's why you ban it. <laughs> yep, exactly. Mark of a true esports player right there. Blame the stage. Oh, man. Outer is having to play so carefully solely from the fact that Fly, I, I think at one point, a single hit can basically just kill you. This is why they're being very close to the guard on the edge. And look at that bomb. Ooh almost takes you out and now you're about to be kind of edge guarded oh no wait what a trade oh my goodness that was a great little ledge swap right there as i like to call it and then a dive from game and watch making it three to two in terms of stocks here comes outer rim trying to flip script here oh uh, being able to just kind of it's so hard they're trying to just use their abilities outer wants to be able to combo with their own strikes and the fire but it's just so unfortunate because this stage is just rapidly very annoying though with that back turn gonna be able to send gaming watch gonna be being a constellation in their own right and only taking 30 percent and already evening it out basically here and now the heel steal 44 23 that was a quick turnaround for outer rim here and now just a little up there here comes the key and then, oh, a little splash That's of a, paint. See, look at that, two. You, you just got lucky that didn't immediately break your shield, but then they steal your own attacks. Now they're going to be using it against you. So this is the type of stuff that tilts me off because look at this outer adapting to the playstyle, using less of their resources and more of that thunder sword to be able to take you out, takes the lead. And that's how it should be. For sure. And now 85 for Outer Rim. We're seeing a lot of the uh, arc fires. Oh! The paint. The I think that's me. paint. Absolutely. Uh, I think that's something you would... If that happened to you, I definitely expect you not to like it. I definitely have to agree. Now this is where Outer probably wants to play a little bit more carefully. I mean, was leading in the stocks a second ago, but is not really getting these opportunities. The Game & Watch just has so many opportunities. Jeez. Never mind. Never mind. I apologize for even doubting Outer for a second. I was more worried uh, just because those bombs are really good at making those spaces. However, catching them out with the fire was was a very good opportune time to be able to combo and hit and then uh, you know they were at around like 70 or something and then immediately get that critical strike that takes you out 
Yeah, and you know that arc fire, it's almost similar to Ness's PK fire, and just slightly. I think the PK fire is obviously way better. Uh, but yeah, definitely gets your opponent stuck, and then you just make him punish for that. And, you know, Lilat did not slow him down whatsoever at that last stock either. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's an absolute amazing way to just, like, delete some uh, character. And, you know, may maybe maybe my Game & Watch hate is because I'm just a bad player. You know, going up against my friends who are just really good at the game. Uh, so, you know, I, we, I got to see a different place. I got to see different opportunities. And I got to say that um, while I was worried at first because the stage has those small spots and we saw uh, moments where Outer just wasn't able to kind of hit. Also, I think that's water. I think it's a water bucket. Water bucket? Okay. Or oil. Uh, it's actually oil, according to Aeon, our producer. So paint or water or oil, either way. We are We were just soaking up that entire match right there. I was just waiting to make a pun like that, just trying to figure it out, trying to... <laughs> Either no. way, so I apologize, ladies and gentlemen, but... Hey, William and Mary sending in north, and we will see who Canisius sends in. I mean, it, it's it's an 8... I mean, uh, it, it's an 8-bit character in a 2D screen and on a color skin, so it's, you know, it's not too out of the ordinary for us to just kind of forget for a second, even though I, I try to just immediately delete Game & Watch from my brain very much do not like it so uh that's my caster bias for the day i guess i can't be anymore i'm more interested to see what's our possible next uh next matchup so canisius actually is sending an imp to wrap things up here and imp is a robin player as well so we'll probably see another robin um i'm not quite sure who north mains in smash i don't think i've seen north play at all mm -hmm. You know, I that that's that's a very scary fact. Uh, just because we're not going to be able to get a bit of insight, because normally we can sit here and look at these matchups. We can kind of say, "Oh, Robin versus Game and Watch." You know, that looks nice. This is what you got to do. This is how you got to play. This is you know, kind of the stuff you want to more focus on. While we didn't, because uh, we're not like that. Uh, Robin versus an unknown entity shivers mm -hmm. my timbers. Well, uh, I think I just found out, uh, according to our notes here, North is a Wii Fit Trainer main against Robin. I'm sorry. Yes. From the... I thought that was a meme. Nah, I mean... Okay. Wii Fit Trainer. Okay, okay. I, I, so I mean, there are Wii Fit Trainer players out there. I just don't take them seriously. What are you going to do? Exercise? Hey, hey you know... That's how you that's how you win games, you know. I mean, athletes exercise all the time and you know, do you think LeBron James would be dominant in the NBA if he didn't lift a pound or two on the weights? I don't know. But hey, it, it it might it works. It, it might work for North and it's been working out for William and Mary, who he's playing for being up sixteen to four, so we'll see how it goes. But man, I I don't know. Because I, I think I spend too much time focusing on, on things like Evo, uh, especially at the like, high tier. I'm really into the Smash Melee scene as well. So um, We Fit Trainer is a, is a new step for me to kind of pay more attention to uh, because a lot of a We Fit Trainer's moves are very close in until like you're breathing, you know, you're... <gasps> and then you get that like one ball beam, you get the spike and... Uh, I don't, I don't know, at least in my friend group, when we see it, when we play We Fit Trainer, it's more of a meme. Like, we, we're just saying, like, pacer test memes. <laughs> mm -hmm. There you go, yeah. I think that's, I think that's very true, I, honestly. Uh, it looks like for our bands, we got Smashville Band, and we got PS2 and Final Destination Band. So, we will be finding out a pick very soon. If I had to guess... It's either going to be... Oh, never mind. I didn't get a chance to guess. I was going to guess town, and that was the pick. <laughs> oh, what are you, some type of super wizard? It's almost like as if you can hear them where they're oh, talking no. to. No, I just came back from the future just uh, by like five seconds and found, that, found out the pick and just relayed it right there. So, uh, yeah. I could, I could definitely... Uh, respect and see that ideal, especially because you're rocking with the retro background. You know, I can't even get my green hey, screen to work half the time. You. 
It took it only took me five hours to get my green screen to work, so it's all good. But here is our button check here, and there is Robin. There is the trainer of We Fit. Of I'm not we gonna Fitness. lie to you. I absolutely hate Tom Nook. He's stealing my bells. And look at this. He, he he's running an illegal fight club. To watching both Robin and We Fit trainer just brawl on. You know this. Where where's the IRS coming in to take his taxes? Hey now, rule number one, we don't talk about Fight Club. Just make sure Tom Nook didn't hear that. But yeah, and it looks like who else was there? The the Mabel sisters, and... You, you think I remember the Mabel sisters? Oh, I love the Mabel sisters. What are you talking about? They're like, they're living a weird life. What do you mean? They're just, they just set you up with clothes and all that. Listen, they're nice. I, I'm a nudist in my own right. Uh. Definitely gotta say, uh, gotta, you know, it's like the Wii Fit trainer, you know, no, no skin, barely any clothes, skin tight. Nobody will touch you, all right? You'll never touch a naked man. You'll never rob a naked man, but they got to rob. That's true. Uh, okay, you make a very valid point, I guess. Um, not gonna lie, I don't know how to respond to exactly any of that right there. Okay. Um, victory. There you go. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, we will be like uh, Dune, uh, but we saw obviously we saw Robin wipe the floor with Game Watch this last time, and we might be seeing uh, Robin for Canisius this time. Try I'm to wondering. I'm wondering what how much there is of expecting between each other. These are two very different play styles. I'd like to think. Uh, that you're gonna be going up against, and they're both semi-decent at this range, so it's who who's gonna have better resource management to be able to break it out. For sure, a lot of projectiles flying for both ends. We got the soccer ball for Wii Fit Trainer, and then that, uh, big ray of sunshine, whatever that's called, that light, light ball. And then obviously Robin's Bells falling through here, but here comes Imp, or excuse me, here comes North. The Wii Fit Trainer with a 110 to 11. So, wonder who's winning this fight. Oh, it is just so hard to play Robin because well, the Wii Fit Trainer is being able to do what Robin does, but much better, especially with this soccer ball. Throws it out, gets that little bit of healing. Not even going to worry. It's almost as if this fight is back at the three stock scenario. Robin has to play so carefully. At any scenario, they can just die, and it's solely just because, look at this, Wii Fit Trainer is kicking you in the face and getting a good cardio out of it. For sure, definitely training Robin here how to really fight, and it's just not really working out for Robin. Oh my goodness. If, if Wii Fit Trainer just didn't have that good of a recovery, maybe that would have been an SD, but it's not. And really, sticking to only 13% damage. Oh, and the soccer ball. Oh, it's just not looking good. This is so far looking close to a 0 to 3. Uh, and while, yes, uh, I forget the terminology, they're just being able to heal so much, Robin's not going to be able to move in. It just seems like they're trying to bait them in kind of reactive play, but that's not really working to their style anymore. And just some more aerial moves. Here comes the hoop from... We fit trainer and then a miss soccer ball opportunity. Just a lot of jumping over each other and missing hits here. And right now, oh my goodness, got hit with the arc fire out of nowhere. Gonna avoid the thunder. North is at 54%, the highest he's ever been at today. Living in an absolute dangerous game. Imp is just gonna be hit. Jeez. What it even is that? Is that the patio? I don't even know what type of muscle move that is. An absolute aggression in, and that just works well. I, I gotta be, I gotta be honest. I'm a little bit more surprised uh, just at that outcome, and that's mostly because I feel the Robin can very much play that aggression and has so many options and variety to kind of take those first engagements. That uh, I, I didn't think We Fit Trainer would be able to counter it out, but it just seemed that they were able to absolutely three stock it. Absolutely, and it was really just the healing from North that really kept him in the game. Obviously, just making sure for like the first two stocks of Imp, like he didn't break, he did not break 
until that very last stock. So definitely able to be in control of that entire match and just use projectiles as well as possible and everything else and just making misses from Imp until the very end until you got 54. But really, it was just all... It was just William and Mary, like, throughout that entire game, in and out. I got a great... Now going into the future, you know, just being able to kind of read it a little, my eyes opening up, I'm wondering how this is going to change the way that they compete. Uh, it definitely is going to be a lot harder because you've been three stocks, so now you're, you got to be looking at yourself like, huh, you know, do, do I push in more? Do I let my range in? You know, a lot mm -hmm. of different opportunities. Yeah, you, it's safe to say William and Mary has already sealed off this win over Canisius, winning the entire set. Um, so they're, they can pretty much have the freedom to do whatever they want in this next matchup, while Canisius is going to have to attempt to play for some points and seeding in this last or like last or next to last match here. Uh, the last uh, stage is going to be Small Battlefield between these two characters. Uh, mm -hmm. The the bands were Smashville, uh, Yoshi's, and Final Destination. Oh, the Final Destination, hey, my goodness, they just they just don't want to play it. Had had too much experience on it, I guess. However, back on to our standard. This is where we're going to be seeing them already take place. Imp wants to be more edge guarding, it seems, and is trying to be more scared of North, in a sense, making sure that shield is up, counteracting these abilities, but still, being able to throw out more of the resources is looking like an opportunity to get more damage in until you get comboed by North. Oh, sheesh. The, the spike. Early spike for North. And that's just kind of the night Kanishius has been having. It's just uh, not going to be looking good. They're just not going to be able to kind of hit these combos or enough of those hits as well. as like that was a blockable opportunity. However, the charge, they, they seem to not react to it fast enough. Imp is just not getting the charge time is outright out uh, kind of playing them. North is abusing it to the highest standard. Blinking, you miss it, but Imp already getting out to 103. Now it's 145. Jeez, I need to let me speak the percentage and already lost the stock. Really, like, it's just North is just laying his uh, foot on the gas pedal and just not letting go. And really just laying all the damage out there on the on the stage. Look at this. Being careful. Still barely under 50. Goes down, gets the healing for a little second, and then... It's hit again, you know, trying to get that recovery out. But Imp is not looking for any kind of aggressive styles. It, it almost seems they're a little bit more scared as they move in. Finally able to hit a couple combos. You need to try and kill with it. You have to even the score. Wow, the uh, soccer ball can get through that earth fire and just bounced off the edge right there. And here comes more soccer action. You know, play. he's... I gotta say, he's not playing soccer right. He's hitting it, the ball with his hand, not with his leg. I think Nintendo might need to fix that. Uh, I agree. Look at this. Imp having to be extremely careful. Just at one, two, nine, and another three stock. This was the this. I think this was with a little bit more hits in, but just not much you could do against it. Oh, and the final score, I believe, will four in favor of William, William and Mary, and GG's are going all around in the chat. But really, William and Mary feeling good about themselves after this commanding win today. No, I'll, I'll give that definitely so. Uh, started off absolutely amazing, though that those three stocks a little bit more uh, of a of a VOD review, I think, opportunity. You know, why did you think you got spiked? Why would you position yourself in a spikeable position, as I'd like to <laughs> tell myself? Mm-hmm. There you go. I would. I need to consider that myself. I always put myself in those situations, and I want to. I want to be the guy that spikes, you know. But really, you, you, you. no. You go. You go. Mike. Oh, I totally forgot what I was gonna say. Honestly, oh, but yeah. so go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. You know, I always feel uh, it's not the most satisfying spike on uh, the Wii Fit Trainer, but it was absolutely a really nice one and. Uh, a very scary challenger, I think, for the future. Absolutely. It got the job done. That's what we can say for sure.
Um, we will be right back. We will be getting an interview with one of the players from William & Mary, so stick around. Don't want to miss out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back and we are joined by the man himself, Outer Rim. Outer Rim, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me, yeah. All right, so let's just dive right into it. Um, you were you were Robin, and I was just curious, what do you think really went well for you in your match? Um, so the Game Watch matchup can be kind of tricky for Robin because mainly because of his bucket. Uh, if he can absorb a lot of uh, Elf Thunders, it can be pretty strong when reflected. But if he absorbs like Arc Fires, uh, it's not so bad because they're kind of weak uh, when he absorbs them. So I think that went all right. The first game he didn't get to absorb much. Second game he absorbed more. So I think he did better that game mostly because of that. Yeah. But overall, I was pretty happy with how I did, because, yeah. Absolutely nice, and, you know, I, I I gotta ask a little bit of a question, but what is a considered, like, a good warm-up ritual, at least for yourself? Because, obviously, you had a very nice performance today, and that probably takes a lot of practice, so is it, like, specific players you're kind of going up against, and you're all warming up against each other on, like, the randomest characters, or how is it? Uh, for me, I just like to play quick play, uh, <laughs> Elite Smash. I, I think it's good, like... Uh, Wi-Fi practice. Uh, yeah, I, I spend more time than I should on quick play. It's probably not good for me, <laughs> like mentally, but uh, it's good practice for playing well online. Awesome. And next week, or not next week, but because uh, we're gonna go for like Thanksgiving break, I think next week. But uh, after that, you guys are gonna be going up against the champs, Mississippi State. 
Um, is there anything that stands out to you, to you guys on how they play and what you look for into that matchup? They're definitely a very scary team. Uh, they've got some very, very strong players. Um, I think making sure we match our guys up with theirs in a way that benefits us is going to be key. Because I totally think we can do it. I think we have the talent we need uh, and the skill. Uh, and maybe we should probably be practicing for the characters we know they play. Because a lot of their good players are like solo mains. Like they stick to their characters. So we know what to expect to a certain degree. Mm, that's really good. Yeah. And just uh, wrap things up here. Uh, is there anybody you would like to give a shout out to? Just uh, shout out to my team. I, I love those guys. It's always a blast getting to play in the EGF, like chatting with them while we're playing, cheering on everyone. And it feels good when they cheer me on too. <laughs> so <laughs> lots of love to them. Awesome. Yeah, sounds like a good team you guys got there. Uh, out of room, thank you so much for joining us and hope to see you back here next week uh, or again the week after because it's only winners in the interview box here. I hope so too. Thanks for having me. Awesome. And with that, we're going to be taking a short break. Coming up next, we got DePaul University versus Quinnipiac University. So that's a matchup that you guys are going to want to watch. So we'll be right back at around 610 Eastern.